I really have enjoyed making my camera reviews over the years, but I haven't done one for two years. That was a Sony FS7. And the reason being is they just take too much time and I can't afford to do them. Um, I don't have, really don't have the time to do them. Because for me, a proper camera review should be done over a long period of time. It should be really in depth. Get to know the camera super well, which you can't do over like a day or two days where most people put out their reviews, if that. So for me, weeks or ideally months is needed. And so I haven't done one since. And although I have done vlog style reviews uh, in the past couple of years, in fact, in the past year, did one on the um, Ursa Mini 4.6K last year, about a year ago. And the, um, oh, the DJI Mavic Pro as well. But I'm gonna do another one. Again, it's just a short sort of, it's not a proper full review because I've only got this camera for a couple of days. And it's just, um, there. That is the Canon C200. The much waited for, not replacement to C100 because I'm still gonna make it, but it feels kind of like that. It's got a lot of interesting features and it certainly interests me more than the C300 Mark II did. I'll explain that throughout the day. I've only got the camera until, well, it's now Saturday, two o'clock. It's being picked up at eight o'clock on Monday morning, but I've also got a lot of work because I have a massive shoot starting on Monday for three weeks. So I have to prepare for that tomorrow. So basically all my filming is gonna be today. I'm gonna go out into Richmond, meet up with some friends, and just film what I can. I've only got two batteries, so I, I can't film too much. I want to try out as many of the features of the camera as possible and try and get, say, certainly a decent first impression of the camera away from just specs. Thank you to proav.co.uk who loaned me the camera. And they've also let me borrow the 18 to 18 and to Canon UK as well with their cooperation. So I just want to show you the camera here. Um, I've got it on an e-image tripod, again, that they've let me. Sorry, the kitchen's a bit messy right now. And um, I've also got a small HD 503. This is the ultra bright monitor, the, it's like 2300 nits. So it's super bright. Uh, I don't know what the screen is going to be like outside. It is touch screen though, touch screen tracking focus, which is a really important deal. Uh, it is, of course, EF mount, Super 35 sensor. It has a slot here for CFast cards, and you use that only for raw recording. Yes, internal raw recording, which is a really nice feature to have. How practical it is, we'll soon find out. We have two slots here, and this is for the SD cards uh, because the other recording format is uh, an 8 bit 420 MP4 and H.264. Um, it's around 150 megabits a second for the 4K 5060p. So, um, and that's pretty good uh, in that it's like an A7S2. It's not great, it's like the FS5 as well, in a way, for the 4K, not 10 bit. So, we'll see how that's going to be. Um, and I've got a Rode mic up here as well, because I'm going to record some audio. So this is the setup. I've got some other lenses. I've got a, a 70-200 Canon, 100-400. Uh, I also have a couple of lenses for lower light filming. If my two batteries can last that long. It's a nice small charger. It does have a bit of a bigger sort of brick to go with it. Um, and I'm just getting it its last boost. It was fully charged, but uh, I put it on the camera. And the camera was turned on and it stayed on for like an hour, which was really stupid of me. So I'll just wait for that battery to get the last bit of juice and then head on in. It's a lovely day and I'm even wearing shorts. I don't often wear shorts. I have nice legs. Do you think I have nice legs? I sound so insecure right now. It's terrible. I've always been a fan of the Canon C-Line, their cinema cameras, well, not all of them. I did really like the Canon C300, which I, I owned for about three years and served me very well during that time. I did pick up a C100 as well, although I didn't really use it that much, but still liked it. And the 1DC was my favorite camera for a number of years. I did try to see 300 Mark II and I liked it, but the lack of 50p, 60p slow motion in 4K um, was for me a big omission. Something which this camera actually does, even though it's lower in the line, 
than the C300 Mark II. And also the high frame rate, 100, 120 frames per second in um, HD, 2K, crops the sensor. So for me that was a big letdown and one of the reasons why I, I never picked up that camera and stuck with my Sony FS7. For me this is a very interesting camera to have 4K slow motion 5060p and have high frame rate 100 120p without cropping the sensor using the full sensor is is great to have it on there but the fact it records raw internally is I wouldn't say strange or maybe I will say strange it's it's unexpected to have raw internally and very good it's not like it's the first camera to have raw recording internally that is sub ten thousand dollars of course all the black magics have raw recording internally but for a canon this is a first it records in cinema raw light which is a new format of compressed raw up to 30p it's 12 bit dci and if you're going to 50p or 60p it drops a 10 bit dci it is still quite heavy on date if you are going to shoot 50 60p a 128 gigabyte card shooting in that 10 bits raw will give you about 15 minutes whereas the mp4 will give you a hell of a lot more but just what is that quality like on the mp4 because that's something that i would really see myself using a lot more on this is a pre-production model see how long it takes to start up not yet there we go that wasn't that long the lens that i got with it the uh, 18 to 80 from canon it's uh, a really nice cine lens it's um mostly native has stabilization it has autofocus which is really cool it's 18 to 80 but it's a t4.4 it's a little bit slower than i would like and not quite the range so a lot of the stuff i'm gonna what well, you want to get today is some long lens stuff so i'm going to switch lenses this is one of my favorite lenses it's the canon 100 400 uh, zoom and it's uh, the Mark II. As a whole, the menus are actually really good and they're very intuitive and they make sense. Uh, very Canon. Um, they do when you order for a worst place thing ever on a menu on an important section, which is initialized media right next to your record format. So, you know, you want to switch between RAW and MP4, you go there. You go the one above. If you're tired, you could easily <laughs> make that mistake. Let's hope that doesn't happen. They should move that away from that menu. I'm doing some autofocus tests up on Richmond Lock and touchscreen tracking. It seems to be working okay. Let's see if it loses him. Yeah, I think I just lost him there. It did a pretty good job. And the, you, the way you, uh, you get focus is by touching the screen. It selects a point and it keeps whatever's in that square in focus. If you want it to track, you need to program one of these buttons. And I programmed the one underneath here. And this puts into tracking mode, you can see this little crosshair. And then I touch what I want to track, and then it should, in theory, track it. The Canon Dual Pixel Autofocus System is, for me, the best autofocus I use. I did a whole three-part series about autofocus which you can check up on this link. The implementation here isn't my favorite. I think I do prefer the 1DX Mark II. It's a bit fiddly to get it to track by having to press a button and then press the screen if you want to change the subject to track. Within that shot you have to press the button again and then touch the screen and I do find that a little bit fiddly. With the 1DX Mark II you just touch away and there you go. But at least if you do want to just get something in focus and not track, it does that. Because let's be frank, there's many times where we just want to get the shot in focus and we don't actually want the focus to be tracking.
done loads filming and uh, managed to get a battery charge. Sarah's turned up uh, with Julian. I don't know how much more I'm going to get done because of uh, the kids. But uh, so get some nice shots for me, yeah? I may use them. I'll put up a little, cap little caption if it's one of Julian's shots in the edit. Most likely you won't see any captions because <laughs> there won't be any of these shots in the edit. Uh, I've just formatted all of your stuff. Uh, got it. Where's the back cap? Got it. Top. The C200 is a real pleasure to shoot with. The buttons uh, kind of make sense, really, but I guess that's kind of being used to the C300. And I did shoot mostly MP4 and very happy with the results. Got to be obviously a lot more careful with your exposure in MP4. So if you're clipping the highlights, which I did on a few shots, you won't be able to bring those back. And I shot C log 3 for the most part. And yeah, very happy with the results. Real pleasure to shoot with. Sarah's on the 1DX Mark II. Julian's on the C200. And I'm using the Sony RX100 Mark V. The question is, who's going to get the best shots? I think it's going to be... Definitely going to be Sarah. Sarah's going to get the best shots. My first glitch that I've got so far um, is I can't play back anything. And this is not the RAW, this is the MP4s. And it's weird because some of those came up a minute ago, but now they've all gone. This is pre-production though, so I'm not too worried just yet. I may freak out later. I think the C200 is a terrific camera. Is it perfect? No. It could really do with a 10-bit internal codec. Yes, it has a 10-bit raw codec and even a 12-bit raw codec, but the file size is a pain and the workflow is also a pain. Using the Canon software, you convert it into ProRes. I need my raw to work within Premiere and it doesn't. And there's no sign of it being supported by Adobe right now or in the future. Canon are bringing out an XAVC codec in early 2018, but whether that's 10 bit, we don't know. A lot of people are saying it will just be 8 bit. And sadly, there's no 4K 10 bit out, so you can't even use an external recorder to record a 10 bit ProRes file. Despite that, this really is a terrific camera. Well, this has stopped me. I'm not going to get the new camera wet. I have no idea what the waterproofing is like, so... I have no idea what the waterproofing is like on the RX100. Or on me, so that'll do for tonight. The rain did stop, and I was able to get a little bit of low light testing. The max ISO of the camera is 102,400. But to me, the low light performance is better than my Sony FS7 and FS5. 640 ISO, 800 ISO, 1000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,400, 8,000, 10,000, 12,800, 16,000, 20,000, 25,600, 
thickness as high as it goes. If it had that middle ground codec between the MP4 and the RAW, this would be an absolute must buy. But as it is, it's it's pretty good and it's great value for money. Will it replace my FS7? No, I love my FS7. There seems no real reason for me to do that. And I also have a 1DX with dual pixel autofocus, which is clearly one of the best features of the C200. It has better autofocus implementation and a lot better frame rates than the much more expensive C300 Mark II. With the Panasonic EVA1 due out relatively soon, this really is an interesting time, exciting time for video cameras. Who is this camera for? I don't think it's really for broadcast work because of that lack of 10-bit internal. RAW is simply not workable in that sort of work. But for more independent staff, people do events and stuff, the MP4 is very strong. And if you need that RAW occasionally, it is there. It's a fascinating camera.